when I first started, I was like, you know, I'm just going to help those people and give love to those people. But as I started to volunteer, uh, those people have names. Their eyes are warm. They have stories that match mine in some ways. Volunteering has tremendously changed me as a, a person. What started as wanting to give back to those who have served our country has become much, much more than that. When I started volunteering, I was a little concerned about I, if I'm going to start this, I want to be able to do it on a regular basis. And it became evident to my friends, to my family, if you're looking for Henry on Tuesday, he'll be at the VA hospital. My passion is with our homeless veterans um, because a lot of times if you look right, walk right, talk right, smell right, people are, are very apt to help you. But if you're down on your luck and sleeping in the street, people may not be as quick to um, offer assistance. The most surprising aspect of volunteering in the VA has been how bright and happy the hospice actually is. A large number of the veterans there have quite a sense of humor. Being around other vets gave me a, a sense of purpose and it's really quick to make friends because we went through um, similar experiences. Volunteering isn't necessarily mopping floors or taking out the garbage. It's a way that you can help people uh, through something that you love and something that you're doing already. It expands your worldview. It enlightens you. I volunteer a lot and I greet a lot of veterans when they come in. I'm a single lady, so this is a positive way of giving back my time. Listening to someone's story is very important, and just a hug sometimes, very important. Never knew how important that was until I started volunteering. They give it back to me. Hello, it's so wonderful to see you today. It was a World War II veteran that came in. Now, you know that there's very few World War II veterans alive now today. So I just told him it was very special and an honor to, to meet him and greet him. Kind of touched him um, by the hand because he was on his walker. And um, they, they walked away. Maybe three or four days later, his grandson came to me and told me that he had passed away. But he had mentioned me. Uh, did you see that lady that was, you know, talking to me? So that made my day that I, I made him smile. About eight years ago, I was fortunate enough to adopt a beautiful 107 pound German Shepherd. The owner had passed away and I decided I wanted to do uh, some volunteer work and uh, some pet therapy. When I saw the VA, I knew that was it. I have so much gratitude for the men and women who have served our country. I personally never have, and I look at it like this is my service to the country. The most compelling memory that I have volunteering here with Rocky was when the volunteer office called me up to uh, see the particular patient with uh, PTSD who was scared to death of dogs. The psychiatrist opened the door and the patient was sitting on the opposite side of the room uh, and he asked him from one to 10, what is your anxiety level? And he said nine or 10. He had him uh, in time move a couple steps closer and would ask him again, what's your anxiety level? And, Within 40 minutes, he was actually feeding the dog with sick in his hand in Rocky's mouth. Um, it was a very moving experience for me. Um, my eyes welled up with tears, and the psychiatrist was just beside himself. He just uh, was amazed that this thing happened. It's a wonderful feeling to be able to know that I did something good. And aside from the fact that I never get tired of people telling me how gorgeous my dog is. As the child of Lebanese immigrants, I grew up in the United States with a 
admiration of the freedoms. And that's kind of what has led me to volunteer with the VA. The veterans that I volunteer with are in the hospice, so they're going through the final stages of life. And it means a lot to me to be able to give back to them at this time. Around two years ago, I had the opportunity to comfort a veteran in the final stages of the dying process. He didn't have any family with him at the time. Um, and at that point, I sat with him and held his hand. He may have been scared at that moment. Um, and part of what I was feeling was empathy for his situation. I wanted to make sure that he had the most um, peaceful experience at this, at this stage as he could. And it was quite a powerful experience for me to, to sit with him and comfort him in those, in those final moments. I was, um, of course, you know, I'm retired Air Force, uh, public affairs, so I was doing a media escort into Baghdad. As we were leaving Baghdad, we were on a, a C-17, which we know that's a very large aircraft, and, and it just hit me right at that moment as I'm watching them load stretcher after stretcher of these men and women who were wounded, of just how very blessed I was. Mm -hmm. At that moment, I decided that when I retired, that I wanted to work at the VA and I wanted to help take care of veterans because those are the men and women that I served with and not all of them came back to be able to help the others. And um, I can and I'm going to, and that's why I work here at the VA. My injury happened, uh, I was returning home and I um, had a firearm and I put it up and. In the process of putting it up, I had an accident that uh, left me paralyzed from the waist down. As I was being transported in the ambulance, uh, I was hearing uh, that I wasn't going to make it. So when I woke up about a week later, um, I was very calm and was grateful to be alive. One of the things that is really challenging for veterans and even myself is acceptance. For a veteran, that word is viewed as a negative word, where it may sound absurd, but acceptance means given in or given up. People see me in a wheelchair and they know obviously I've, I went through some difficult times, but uh, there are people that motivate me and, and inspire me. Bill served in the Army during Vietnam and he was exposed to Agent Orange. I get a little choked up even talking about it, but Bill inspired me with days where I didn't feel 100% and was looking for an excuse. I was like, well, if Bill can finish his chemotherapy and get up and go visit uh, fellow veterans in the hospital, I have nothing to complain about. But uh, we're not always in control. Even though I only knew Bill for about a year, it, it seemed like I've known him all my life. I said, now that I'm retired, I want to give back, like a lot of people say, and I want to help lift these veterans up. I didn't get a chance to go to Vietnam, you know. Your invitation got lost in the mail, huh? Yes, sir. Well, I kept noticing every time when I would leave to come home, I thought, you know, I feel better than I did when I got there. So it worked both ways. I am in my late 60s now, and um, I think of the term family, it means a lot. It means your family as far as your wife, your children, but I've had the pleasure of having a family in more than one area. The relationship with Frank started through the VA hospital. He's probably has 15 to 17,000 volunteer hours, and I think I'm coming up on 800. Pigeon ask up. How can I help you? So with Frank, I made the observation that he was taking a bus home. It's only like eight or nine miles, but it takes an hour and a half, three different buses. I said, I'm headed your way. Would you like a ride home? And he said, oh, Henry, I would love it. It would save me a lot of time. So every time I go that way, I uh, would give him a lift. Thought it was a way I could help out a fellow volunteer to get home without having to ride three buses for an hour and a half. 
becomes part of my routine. It's part of what I do now. Fly fishing had been a hobby, a pastime of mine, and I didn't see how this could be used and how this could have therapeutic properties to it. When I was spending time with, with my grandfather, Battle of the Bulge combat veteran from World War II, uh, we really spoke a lot about being outdoors and fishing and hunting. And he began sharing stories of his time overseas uh, in combat. And these were stories that no one in my family had heard. He never spoke of it at all. Sitting with him at a diner over breakfast one day, and out of the blue, he turned to me and said, did I ever tell you about the first time I jumped out of an airplane? And my jaw just dropped. Hearing his stories of returning from Europe and how he sought refuge in the outdoors, it was a, an epiphany moment. Uh, a light bulb went off in my head that I could take something that I love to help other people. That, that is, was a truly powerful moment in my life. I oftentimes, after a day of volunteering at, at the VA, drive home feeling enlightened and empowered uh, and unbelievably happy. And, and that is a feeling I think uh, anyone, young or old, uh, should, should experience.